Hello Summers, welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ng, and today we'll be talking about the 10 mechanics that way too many people don't know about. While having good reaction speed and skill shot accuracy is important in League of Legends, a lot of what determines how good you are is your game knowledge. Not knowing what you really died to is frustrating, and not making the most out of your champion can lead to you losing more often than you should. That's why I'm here today to help bring you up to speed. I'm sure at least a few of these tips and tricks are news to you. Number 1. Flashing to carry abilities over the first mechanic that we'll be talking about is using flash to either extend the range of, change direction of, or cancel some short dashes. I'm sure that all of you know at least a couple of these, like the classic Gragas E flash combo, but there are so many more that you probably haven't seen. Shen's taunt has a relatively low range and only goes in a straight line, so it can be a bit hard to get multiple foes in fights, but with this you can taunt into one target and then flash onto another one that's further away or even off to the side of your initial cast. Jarvan, Fizz, and Vi are just some of the other champions that can make some nice plays with this mechanic. While this is a really useful tool to have in your bag, do make sure that you test out how the interaction works with your specific champion. For example, if you use Flash Midair as Trisana after casting W, you'll simply blink to the ground and W will be cancelled. Defensively, this is a great way to avoid incoming skill shots that may snipe you out of your jump. But if you're trying to do this offensively, like our previous mention abilities, you're going to be pretty disappointed. The W won't do damage nor slow, nor will it add a stack to an enemy with explosive charge. Have you ever asked yourself after a bad game, what am I missing? Or sought help from impatient friends? Or browsed desperately for answers that only bring up more questions? Your self-doubting days are over with Discovery, the first game-focused AI. Discovery is trained on the world's leading esports athletes to be your everyday personal coach. That's right, Discovery can help you improve your gameplay by giving you tips and strategies to take your game to the next level. Get started at ProGuides.com. Number two, flash buffering. Our second mechanic is very closely related to the first, flash buffering. Things like Ari Charm Flash and Lee Sin Kick Flash have been in highlight reels since the ancient days of League of Legends, so I won't really call them secret mechanics, but those quick combos aren't the only way to abuse flash buffering. You know, those times where you go to flash auto somebody with 1 HP and they flash out before you can input the auto, or you try to flash ult somebody as Malzahar but they instantly flash before you can get that cursor on them, well, you can easily solve that issue with just one little fix. Instead of trying to flash first, input your auto attack or spell command and then flash. Your champion will keep the command and instantly let out an attack or spell after the flash. It doesn't matter if your opponent has god tier reflexes or even scripts, they absolutely can't dodge this way. It's also worth noting that this isn't limited to just targeted spells. Spells that you can cast in an area, like any sibbers, can also be used with this. It just goes to show that you can elevate the gameplay on a super simple champion with advanced mechanics like this to put yourself ahead of the average Joes. Number 3. Lollipopping the next thing we'll talk about is lollipopping. No, this isn't a specific mechanic to that terrifying poppy skin. It's actually an explanation for when you get hit by those BS skill shots that you totally dodged. I'm sure you know what I'm referring to. Those times where you perfectly sidestep a Nautilus hook, except you get hit anyway. Or when a Thresh hook snags you when you're just clearly behind the minions. You're not dying to some glitch, bug, or anything like that. This is simply a mechanic in the game that Riot doesn't really give a lot of transparency on. To understand what is happening, imagine Karma's Mantra Q or Jace's Q going through a gate. You know how those explode at the end of their max range? Well, that's what lollipopping is, just a bit of a lesser degree. It happens more than just hooks, but those are just the most obvious and frustrating cases. When a skill shot projectile reaches max range, it blooms a bit in all directions, trying to latch onto a target. The explanation for this is that it's mostly a camera thing. Since our POV isn't actually top down, we're really seeing the game from a diagonal angle. But still, that reasoning doesn't make you feel any better when you die to it. Number 4. Emotes and other actions can hide spell animations. Another annoying thing to do with gameplay clarity has to do with hiding spell animations. There are all types of little animation cancels in League, but some feel like straight up cheating. Specifically using emotes and other actions that just absolutely do not feel intended. For example, if Nautilus throws out a hook in the middle of a passive enhanced auto animation, the initial windup of the hook is hidden, making it seem way faster when it flies out. This can easily catch foes off guard, and combined with the aforementioned lollipop effect will often lead to kills. This one is a bit skin specific, but Space Groove Blitzcrank Taunt really looks similar to a hook, so rather than hiding a spell animation, it's more like he's using a decoy to fake the real thing. This can be flashes or mobility abilities, so he can go ahead and land his real hook. There have been other things such as Kaisa's joke hiding her W cast entirely, but that's all been patched out. But still, plenty of stuff like this remains in the game, so do a little bit of testing and see if any of the champions that you play have some janky animations that you can abuse. Number 5. Pulling the Minion Wave Okay, so back to some more advanced techniques and less gimmicky bug adjacent ones, let's talk about pulling the Minion Wave. 
Basically, this just means catching the enemy minion wave right as it leaves tower, cutting it to the first bush on that side of the lane, and dipping in and out to keep them there. What's the point of all of this? Well, for one, most of the time you go for this, it's the very first wave. If done perfectly, the enemy minion wave will nuke a single melee minion of your wave, denying the enemy bot laners if they leash too long. Even if that doesn't happen, the wave will now hard push to your side. It ensures that you have a safe way to play the early game, since you'll be immune to jungle ganks and not have to worry about being engaged on by a stronger enemy bot lane. By the way, I know I'm saying bot laners, but other lanes can pull the wave too. In top lane, the technique is the exact same. In mid, it's not entirely as effective, and you usually won't be doing it at level 1. But if the lane is ever fully reset, you can just go for a slight pull on the wave when it reaches the lane again to set up a slow push to your side to avoid jungle pressure. Number 6. Support Items Supports in League don't really make a lot of money, but occasionally, you do get those very long games and then you run into a dilemma. What do you do with the last item slot? For the longest time, you just keep buying control wards, but with the addition of side stone, supports got a nice block of stats to top off their build. But what about mage supports? Getting void staff is a huge spike to damage. Or how about tanks that really need to beef up even more? Stoneplay could really make or break it in the last fight of the game, but going for those means no more control wards, right? Well, what if I said that you could have your cake and eat it too? The requisite for having a watchful ward stone is having completed the support item quest. You don't have to have to have the support item anymore. So, when it goes late, you can sell your support item, giving up green wards, but keeping ward stone for the extra control wards. Yes, this is giving up some vision control, but when the game goes on too long, sometimes you need every bit of combat power that you can get, and desperate times call for desperate measures. Alistar Fail Combo in the very early days of League of Legends, Alistar's combo wasn't automatic. You can just hit W and then time the Q to actually successfully do it. Riot changed that at some point and made it look like a lot of other combos, so that if you press Q after you start headbutt stash, it will always chain afterwards. But this change came with the trade-off. If you use WQ from too close to an opponent, it actually doesn't work. You'll always push the enemy away before your Q goes off, resulting in your opponent escaping and your team probably spam pinging you. This is something that you can play around. If you're playing as Alistar, there will be times where the best move is to move back a bit and then go for the WQ combo. Alternatively, you can just Q flash your foe for an instant knockup and then use W to knock them back into your team. When playing against Alistar, you can use his wonky combo fail against him by constantly stepping in and out of his effective combo range. This takes good mechanics since you have to constantly dance back and forth to stay within his failed combo range, but outside of his Q's range. Also, I don't know if you should be doing this if his flash is up because of the aforementioned Q flash W play that you can go for, but still, something cool to keep in mind. Slowing Callista guts her. Next up, we have to take a look at Callista. Specifically, a way too hard counter for her and makes her feel like alt f 4 With her getting some love on 13.11, it's always a good idea to have an idea of how to deal with her. I know her win rate is still in the red, but that's because Kalista is simply really difficult to play. When you run into a good one, specifically if she's doing with a good support, you'll want an answer. And that answer is picking slows. The thing about Kalista is that, due to her passive, her attack speed is gated by her movement speed. If you slow Kalista, it increases how long it takes for her to go to a complete hop. This means that you're increasing the time between every single attack. I mean, she could just sit still and auto, but that defeats the whole purpose of the champion. Now this also means the inverse is also true. More movement speed won't actually increase Kalista's attack speed, but if she's not moving fast enough, she won't actually be getting off as many attacks as possible. Basically, more movement speed is just opening the gate to its full potential. Trust me, nothing feels worse than being withered by Nasus as Kalista. Alright, this entry is going to be dedicated to multiple small, just for fun passives. In League's early days, Riot used to add playful little mechanics to League. I'm definitely not one of those people that claim League was a better game then, but because it wasn't. But I do miss these fun little things. Nidalee's hidden passive, being a cougar and all, gives bonus experience to underleveled male champions near her. Ninjas work best alone, so when multiple are on the same team, they lose 1 HP for each extra. Sunglasses protect your eyes from the sun in real life and in League. Any skins with sunglasses take one less damage from Leona's sunlight. There are a few others, but these are definitely my favorites. Number 10. Ally Poisons work for Cass E. Finishing off our list, we have a hidden mechanic for Cassiopeia. You might know that Cassiopeia's E does bonus damage and heals her if it's used on a target that's affected by poison. And you probably know that her Q and W apply poisons. But did you know those aren't the only poisons that count? Both Singe and Teemo's poison effects can amp Cass's E damage. Teemo isn't the best team fighter, so while the interaction is neat, it's not like he's the best match with Cass. Singe, on the other hand, is an amazing team fighter in the mid to late game, which is when Cass is at her best. This makes him one of her very best teammates to get matched with. I mean, landing your Q for the extra movement speed is still pretty big, but you won't feel nearly as punished due to the massive damage loss when you do if Singe is there to cover for you. And that wraps things up for our 10 mechanics that you probably didn't know. 
Do let me know if there are any more secret mechanics that you know about down in the comment section below, and we might make a video and give you a shout out. Anyway, as always, thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.